on YouTube? On You're YouTube behind the scenes? Live behind, behind the scenes. scenes. Yeah. Man, I, I, I want to go to Hogan's Beat Shop and do uh, karaoke, but I don't know what karaoke song I want to do, but I think it wants to be a Sid Vicious is My Way. That's, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I think I would do good on that one. I'm going to blow the holster away at, at Monday night karaoke night at Hogan's Hangout. In Clearwater Beach, Florida, brother. Brother. Is that a new hat? Ice water. Ice water. Green tea for all the trolls and stooges. What you going to do, brother? We got anybody in this thing yet? Looks like we have one person. One person. God bless it. Thank you for the one person. I wonder if I can I can switch over and watch it on here. Maybe see what's going. I might be able to see the uh, the chat. Maybe we're up to ten people now. We're on fire. All right, all right. Von Lilas, what's your favorite Sex Pistol song? I I don't know that I know any. I know like one. I think. I, uh, what what is it? What's the? I don't know what your favorite Sex Pistol song is. I'm wondering if Johnny Rotten's going to have to remake "God Save the Queen" since, unfortunately, God rest her soul, the Queen has passed, and he's going to sing "God Save the King" now. <laughs> I don't know. We no. got a couple comments in here now, so we got some people what? coming in to what you. Are people saying to see Eugene. Hey, what's up, Eugene? You're one of my favorite people to watch. Hi, dude. Thanks for all the memories. What did Yuki the Snowman say? Sup, Eugene? Sup, Yuki? Do you know Yuki? Uh, no, but he seemed to have... Uh, a Aprud said, hey, hey. Audio Mannix, the one you just referenced. Jenny Cassidy, this is all I'm seeing right I don't know how to refresh it, though. How do I refresh this thing? Well, I don't think you need to refresh it yet. The, the, the chat line's not filled up. Okay, Fabe. <laughs> <laughs> we got all these people in here and I'm, I'm not refreshed the pig i'm the pig heart killer drake says thanks for the memories eugene question how many times did you play doink two times two times two times the vengeance pay-per-view i believe it was 2002 we were in colorado i can't remember if we we're in colorado city or denver or one of those other cities we had there but i did the pay-per-view uh they brought me in to be uh, Doink the Clown in JBL's Barroom Brawl. Now, if you've never seen JBL's Barroom Brawl from the 2002 Vengeance, you've got to go check this out. This is one of the craziest, intensest, most most full of action and comedy match you've ever seen. And they brought out Doink the Clown. People were ushered out one by one. Uh, uh, Rob Conway and, and uh, Johnny Jeter were the conquistadors. And then uh, uh, Idol Stevens, also known as Damian Sandow, was the Easter Bunny. I don't know why we had the Easter Bunny in JBL's Barroom Brawl, but they brought out Doink the Clown, and everybody said, that's the Brooklyn Brawler. And then they brought out the Brooklyn Brawler, and everybody goes, Bow! And then two nights later, when they filmed SmackDown, um, Doink the Clown wrestled Chris Benoit. So I got to wrestle Chris Benoit on SmackDown, and I was on uh, the, uh, the Avengers pay-per-view as Doink the Clown. And I've always said this. Long as you've heard me say this before. Doink the Clown needs to be in the WWE Hall of Fame, without a doubt. Instantly recognizable character. Everybody loved him. Perfect character that should be in the WWE Hall of Fame. And I think everybody that donned the face paint that was Doink the Clown should be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame under the banner of Doink the Clown. So everybody, let's have a movement. Let's have a push to the WWE Universe. We want Doink Hall of Fame. And Shane Harrington's here. Hi, Shane Harrington. That's right. Uh, was Crispin Wall stiff in the ring? So when we in the business say stiff, that doesn't necessarily mean injurious or, or uh, careless. Like, we generally say snug, which means you're going to feel it. Kurt Angle, Chris Benoit, those guys were snug. Big Show was snug. But he never did – none of those guys did anything, you know, in the ring – intentionally to injure you they always hit you in a safe spot they always hit you as, as safely as they could you know they never did anything intentionally to, to overdo it and hurt you but 
Yeah, Benoit was stiff. Those chops. I, when I was Nick, Mr. Wrestling Nick Dinsmore in OVW, and I wrestled Chris Benoit at the uh, Chris, uh, Christmas Chaos. The show's so nice, we had to promote it twice. When I wrestled Benoit at the uh, Christmas Chaos, I kept counting how many times he chopped me. Boom, throughout the match. Three, four, five. Five times. So when the comeback came, how I many did I get? One, two, that all in a row because that's all I was going to get. There was going to be one opening. I gave him six chops in a row and suplexed him off the top rope or whatever happened off the top rope. I don't remember. I just remember he was on the top rope, and I was just knocking the bejesus out of him as best I could. And uh, so the answer, Chris Benoit, yes, he was stiff, but that necessarily is not a bad thing inside the wrestling profession. Did he say anything after you chopped him six times? Not at all. Absolutely not. Kurt Angle, elaborate on him a little bit. I, I don't really see him as being that way, but because his punches weren't, he, he kind of punched like the rock. It seemed like anyway, like the open hand slap a little bit. So how was he more snug or stiff? Well, this was also before he wrestled John Cena, right as he was putting in the mouthpiece. So Vince wanted him to get a little bit more aggressive, to be a little bit more snug. And uh, I don't think he really chopped, but he had those European forearms that would knock the bejesus out of you. And he grabbed my hair and he would suplex me. And I mean, all that stuff is safe, but you get, you know, super, pardon me, you get suplexed on your back three or four or five times a night. It, it, it tends to take a beating on you. He, he was, he was snug, but in a different way. And, and, and Angle's intensity was so high. Like he was just, just raring to go right from the get go. I'm the pig has a, has, has a question. Now we're going to elaborate this. We're going to actually do a video on this. So, you know, don't spend too much time on it, but it says, hey, man, I remember a match between you and Triple H in a cage match. He beat you bloody and kind of victimized you. Do you think it was so brutal because Triple H was afraid you would take his spot? Well, I'm the pig. What do you think? Do you think that the reason that they put the thumb on Eugene and pushed him down and beaten and bloodied him up and hurt his shoulder was because Triple H was afraid? Then you know what? You might just be true. I think we need to delve into this, like you said, Von Lewis, on another video. We can really get into the weeds, sink our teeth into exactly what happened when Eugene had the, had the thumb pressed on him right there, Triple H. You know, the world may never know. Holding you down. He, he don't want Eugene taking over Evolution. I was I was an honorary member. I was also one time general manager, but yet when they had the big general manager reunion, who was not who who was not invited? Who's got two thumbs and was not invited? I was a big fan of yours. I loved how you would portray all the legends of the past. Okay, thank you. The legends were like my heroes. Those were the guys that I grew up watching. And literally, Von Lyles, you saw me in OVW. I was an accomplished technical wrestler. I could wrestle an hour and not use the same hold twice, no sweat professional. But I like to have fun. I like to entertain people. I like to make people laugh. And going out there, you know, doing the Hulk Hogan leg drop and doing the rock bottom and the people's elbow, doing the macho man, doing the stunner, that was always the – the fun part of the night because we just got to be carefree and do the moves that everybody knew at that time because all those guys were on TV. And I remember it was the Hustler Rip Rogers. Vine Lois, you know the Hustler Rip Rogers. The Hustler Rip Rogers said, good guys, good. You'll never use those moves on TV. Sucka! <laughs> Ow. Buckshot Kid in the house. I know him from another channel. What's up, Buckshot Kid? Buckshot Kid! King A said, do you remember your storyline in SVR 2006? Whatever that is. What's SVR? SmackDown versus Raw, I think. Which is the video game. I didn't play the video game. I didn't play SmackDown versus Raw, but I know that was the video game that I was on that was most widely sold. It was sold, I think, on all the uh, uh, video game platforms. I was also on, I think, was it the New Year's Revolution video game or Day of Reckoning? Man, Day of Reckoning video game. And that was just on one uh, system, one video game system. So the, I, I don't really remember the storyline. I remember at one point I went into a studio. We were in Memphis, and I felt like I was in the uh, Elvis Presley studio, but I don't know if that was the one I was in. And I recorded the voice tracks for some storyline, and I believe it was the one that had to do with, uh, with Trish Stratus. And I don't know if that was SmackDown versus Raw or Day of Reckoning. So maybe somebody in the comments can tell us what that was. 
Matthew in the house, what do you think of Paul Heyman in the WWE Hall of Fame this year? I would not lie to you. I would not lie to you. I like Paul Heyman. I didn't really necessarily get to work with him as a, as a talent and, and him being a manager or, or backstage or, or a great creative direction, but he was always nice to me. He was always super cool. He always liked to talk to me, and I always liked to talk to him. You know, I never had any, uh, what do I want to say, like, there was no time that, that we were any, like, conflicted in business or attached in business. Because, like, him and Brock were attached. Him and CM Punk were attached. Him and Roman Reigns are attached in business. And I never had that that dynamic with him. So there was never really a reason for either one of us to not fear, but think the other is trying to get over on them or is dependent on them, if any of this makes any sense. He was just a cool guy in the back that I remember watching that had a cell phone. Does he still carry the cell phone? I I don't think so. He always carries the belt. Hey, do you have the um your iPad or whatever? Do you have the volume on it right now? It's turned down. Okay, I thought I was hearing double, kind of a double volume. So just that's sure. probably me just stuttering. Okay. Uh, and the, the second part of that question was uh, Cody Rhodes and uh, Roman Reigns. They're going to do battle at WrestleMania this year. I don't know if you're aware of that. You got a you got any uh, a pick on that? You got a prediction? Again, I don't follow the product specifically closely that I watch it each and every time that it's on television, but I see it on social media. So, of course, I've seen Cody Rhodes and The Rock, and The Rock bloody and Cody Rhodes. Has Roman Reigns reached a thousand, what was it, a thousand days of being champion? And what's his title defense? Like, are they trying to get to some record with Roman Reigns that, that, uh, are they trying to get some record with Roman Reigns that, that they need to achieve that will happen after WrestleMania? If that's the case, then I think Roman Reigns will win. But Cody Rhodes has got the story that he should be the guy that wins, in my opinion. And again, I haven't followed all of it. I know he went to AEW and helped help rise that brand, raise that brand, you know, and, and, and made the, the, the journey back to WWE trying to be whatever it is he wants to be, which is probably the champion. And, uh, if I was Cody Rose, I'd, I'd stick my heels in and say, you know, I got to be figured in this way somehow. And I don't know what it's going to be, but I'll tell you this. I feel like WWE has always been the company to swerve everybody in the best possible way and over deliver. And let's hope at WrestleMania 40 and those two nights of main events all night, two nights long that we're going to get some over delivering and we're going to have some WrestleMania moments. If that answers the question. Do you think you could beat Cody Rhodes? Well, hell yeah. That's, that's my own personal question. Oh my God. You seen that guy's calves? My goodness. I, 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 don't know if he, I don't know if those are his calves or if he's riding a chicken. I think his body's going to sue his legs for non-support. You know, Cody Rhodes was my tag team partner in Muncie, uh, Indiana. One of, those <laughs> of course, I've been your tag team partner. Which one was better? Now, now it's on you. Oh, you were for sure, man. It was, it was me, Cody Rhodes, and the custodian. Literally, a janitor from a school was the most over guy on the show. I saw it. I was there. G-Force, baby. <laughs> he really was. Uh, would you ever come back to the WWE? We need characters like you. Well, my lawyers told me that I can neither confirm nor deny that I am currently in contract negotiations with either WWE or AEW. So as for now, it's going to be this. But let me tell you something, brother. As I've said before, as the big brother said, never say never, brother. Jim Cornette has always talked very highly of you as a real professional wrestler. Opinions of good old Jim. Cornette was great for me. You know, I've, I've said it before, like Danny Davis was the one that was the coach on the outside teaching me how to do the moves in the ring. When I got to becoming of a performer. Rip Rogers was the one that was wrestling me in the ring that taught me how to work a match and perform in front of a live crowd. But then it was Cornette that then came in that was the matchmaker of OBW that taught me how to wrestle as a top guy. It taught me how to wrestle as a guy that's over. It taught me how to wrestle in a main event match and, and really wrote the storylines that, that, that made me popular in OBW. So I absolutely love Jimmy. Am I afraid of him? Maybe just a little bit or used to be, you know, he's getting a little bit older, so he might not be as scary. Did he uh, 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 th threaten to, to, threaten to uh, uh, unalive me one time? Maybe, and we might talk about that later. 
But I love Jim Cornette. Hell of a nice guy. Stacy's his wife is awesome too. The whole cast of Cornette with that collection of all kinds of wrestling memorabilia is something I think any wrestling fan would like to have. And uh, Cornette is still on the cutting edge. He's, he's still relevant. You know, he, he's, he's still talked about. Didn't didn't Sam Punk just talk about the experience in the drive-thru? I mean, everybody listens to that. Yeah, he did mention it on uh, Monday Night Raw. Speaking of... So how, uh, long, how, how, how long... Who, who's inducting Paul Heyman and how long before Cornette is either in the Hall of Fame or back on WWE programming? I don't know. Did he go? He went in with somebody, didn't he? he did he go no, in? He inducted, he inducted the Rock and Roll Express. Oh, was that what it was? The Midnight Express and Jim Cornette. Like, Cornette could go in by himself. He managed the Midnight Express, you know, both versions. But then he also managed uh, uh, Yoko and as a world champion, and then Yoko and Owen as tag team champions, and I think Owen and Davey as tag team champions. I mean, Cornette's got, a, of course, a, a, a Hall of Fame-worthy, you know, resume, and everybody wants to see him on a live mic. <laughs> Absolutely. I do. I'd vote for him. Him, Cornette and Dwight the Clown should go in the Hall of Fame on the exact same year. Well, how is Cornette not in the Hall of Fame? That's crazy. They're waiting for it. They're going to bring the pay-per-view to Louisville. When WrestleMania comes to Louisville, that's where they're going to induct him. Uh. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else we got here? Kieran says the Rock's going to turn on Roman at WrestleMania. That could be. I feel like the Rock's going to. However, this 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 episode, this, this time period, this era of WWE, the Rock will eventually leave as a babyface. He always does. He is a babyface. But if he's got a side with Roman now for family slash Bible slash uh, creative reasons, something will happen. Something will happen, and, and I think The Rock will leave a babyface. Will he turn on Roman? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to tune in and, and watch WrestleMania 40. 40, right? 40? 40. 40. I don't know. What else you seeing? You reading, you reading the comments now? Lake in the Dark Productions. Eugene, with my name spelled wrong, proverb, say, well, not much. Okay, thank you, Lake in the Dark. Jim Cornette has to NBE piss, pissed at many people for that to happen. NBE? I don't know, man. Hey, Sean's on here now. He's, he wants to know your um, – first of all, he mentions the YouTube channel, which everybody on here, you should tell them right now, Eugene, to go subscribe to this thing. We get this number count up. We're on the road to 10,000. So, so already? Give, give, our own, uh, give your YouTube channel a plug there. Already? Well, wait a minute now. We've only been in existence for like a month or six weeks, and we're almost to 10,000? What's the record? I think we're closing up on it. But everybody in the chat, please subscribe. Please tell your friends to subscribe. Eugene Behind the Scenes is going to go places with my career that nobody's ever heard before. I finally got, you know, a, a, a fantastic producer and Vaughn Lilas, and we're going to take this, this YouTube show right to the top. Eugene Behind the Scenes is the YouTube channel that everybody needs to subscribe to. We're going to be doing lives. We're going to be doing all kinds of crazy things. I don't want to play our hand before we got it, but I think everybody will be very excited with the things we have upcoming. And just to mention a couple of things we talked about today about uh, favorite people, people that maybe didn't even like Eugene for whatever reason behind the scenes. This guy wants to know uh, maybe your favorite, least favorite to work with in the ring. I don't want to spoil a whole segment we got coming up, but if there's anybody you want to mention, feel free. There wasn't a whole lot of guys that I disliked, like disliked them. There was a handful. No, no, no. no. There, was, there was maybe one or two, maybe one. And since that guy's passed on, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say his name. But some guys were a little – my fuck, I was going to say it. I didn't dislike Test, but he could be a bully. And I remember one time when I was still in OVW, but we were doing shots for WWE, I did a live event. And I remember we were leaving Hilton Head, South Carolina, trying to fly to wherever it was that we're wrestling. And the whole crew with WWE, and I was the green guy. I wasn't on TV. Nobody really, I mean, I knew some people, but most of them were still guys that I didn't know. We, the, over, the flight was oversold, so myself, Rob Conway, and Funaki were the three guys that didn't make the flight. So we had to get on the next flight. I feel like we were flying into Baltimore or something, or they had to fly us into a nearby city, and then they pay for a taxi to get us to the to the arena. All right, so we get to the live event. We're there late, like in the first match, and I had to wrestle test. No problem. 
A Train slash Albert at the time, who I knew because he wrestled in in, in uh, Power Pro Wrestling in Memphis. He came to USW or uh, came to OVW and, and did some shots. So I I'd known him for a while and I liked him. He goes, uh, Tess is a pretty rugged guy, so you know, give him some chops out there because that's what he likes to do. So I, I didn't think Albert would, would steer me wrong. Newsflash: Albert steered me the wrong way, and Tess got so mad and proceeded to not hurt me, not not injure me, but just. As we were talking earlier, be a little overly stiff with me. And I knew that he was a little upset. And afterwards, the agents came up to me. What happened? I said, oh, I chopped him and he got mad. And they all laughed. So I don't know if that answered the question, but. Uh, it's good enough, rest man. In peace, rest in peace, Test. He, he was a very nice guy, but he, he, I, I can understand why he might have been a little agitated at me. And I probably was the, uh, the new guy that should have known my place. But that's never been me. Have you ever met Bret Hart? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I didn't meet him when I was with WWE, but I met him afterwards. Uh, I did a tour of Ireland and France. We did, I feel like we did 17 total dates, and Hitman was, was the headliner, and he just went out and talked and signed autographs, and uh, it was great, and I got to know him real well. And uh, well, I don't know if I got to know him real well, but I got to know him pretty well on that trip. He's a really cool guy. And then uh, my wife came with me on, on that tour when we were in France. She wanted to see France. So we did Ireland. We went to France. She came on. And he really, you know, talked nice to her. But then every time I saw Brett after that, he came to a couple NXT events when I was a coach. He was always like, oh, Eugene, how's your wife? Didn't ask about me. He didn't ask how I was, but asked about my wife. So I like Bret Hart. Although. It's understandable. If this is behind. Yeah, absolutely. If this is behind the scenes, I'm going to have to say what I say to everybody. You know, Bret Hart, the best there is, the best was, the best there ever will be. Bret Hart was very good. Bret Hart is, is Hall of Fame worthy. Absolutely. But when I was a kid. And Bret Hart would get would be selling and we get thrown to the floor or thrown to the mat. He would first start adjusting his knee pads and his elbow pads. And as a kid, I'm looking at this guy going, if he's in so much pain, you think he would be tending to the injury and not adjusting his gear. He can't be in that much pain. He can't be in, in, in that much pain if, if, if you're adjusting your gear. So I never believed Bret Hart as a kid. And then growing up, that's all I saw. So I, I thought he was a great technician and eventually we all become workers, you know. Maybe I will elaborate this on our new Patreon. I believe the Patreon is in the uh, is in the comments, and we're going to try to pick up what we started here on the uh, on the YouTube lives and move it over to Patreon, where we can really maybe start to unravel some of the things that I'm holding myself back from talking about. The Patreon is in the uh, comments. Correct, Von Lewis. Yeah, it's on the screen right now, and we can show some video. I think more video on Patreon for uh, we, yeah, we yeah. Get the copyright. We gotta get that white out of the circle. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, we're planning on doing some watch alongs. So if anybody has a match that they want to watch along with Eugene and the Great Von Lilas, we want to do that on Patreon because I think people would like that because it also would help me to watch. You know, e either a match that I was in, or a match that I was a part of, or a match that I just really liked. To realize, you know, where was I when that was going on? What was I thinking? What was going on around? What was going on in the back? What happened that day? What happened that night? You know, I mean, one that I think we're going to get into is when uh, Evolution turned on Eugene. And I got blood all over myself. And I suffered a, a very severe concussion that night. And what happened with that and how I kind of uh, left the building and the state I was in it was a pretty scary situation that I really haven't touched on. But that might be one thing that we can talk about on Patreon. Or we can just, uh, I don't know, play Duck, Duck, Goose. Can you do that on Patreon? Maybe so. When was the last time you talked to William Regal? Um, it's probably been a, it's probably been a bit. I mean, I, I, I don't talk to him all the time, but I, I saw him. Uh, he was with WWE, but he was at an a independent convention. I saw him there. I don't remember when that was. And then when I was a coach, I got to work with him a lot. But, I mean, as happens in, in wrestling, you know, you're, you're around these people all the time, five, six days a week, you know, your, your, your friends become family and your family becomes, you know, almost distant friends. And you know, all these people, but the minute, the minute you get released or, or retire or leave the business, all of a sudden those people are out of your lives. And it's hard to, it's hard to be on that WWE train going 90 miles an hour, working, flying, traveling, go, 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 and maintain relationships outside that you're not really present in. And at the same time, it's, it's hard to be the guy on the outside trying to say, well, what's going on in there? Because it's just, 
It's a different time. It's a different era. And guys get lost and guys get forgotten. Hopefully, Eugene won't get forgotten. I just put in another link. I, I really don't know how Patreon works. We're going to try it out for the first time tonight. We're going to go there here in about five minutes. And this is the unlisted YouTube link. I don't know if I'm supposed to share this or not, but I am. So I've shared our Patreon link. And here's our YouTube link that we're going to be live on in uh, five minutes. So I don't so know. We're going to switch over to Patreon here in about five minutes. Is that what you're saying, Von Lylos? That's what I'm and saying, that was, yeah. That was the link they're supposed to go to when we, we switch over. We want it to be an easy conversion that people can follow us under Patreon. And then maybe we can get down to some of the nitty gritty. We can watch the videos. We can have the talks. We can unleash with the facts. You like my new hat? Somebody left this hat on the beach. Long story short, I got a new hat. Looks like uh, what's his name? Um, Jack Jack Swagger, Chris, or whatever his name is now. Jake Hager. Jack, Jack Hagar. Jake Hager, whatever his name is. Yeah, he's got a he's got a purple one. If you were asked, this will be our last question. We're going to head on over. If you were asked to return to the Royal Rumble for one night, would you be up for it? Well, I should probably answer this one on Patreon because it's pretty deep. But I'll go ahead and answer it here. Of course I would. But who's to say that I haven't already been asked to be in the Royal Rumble, in a past Royal Rumble? And it, it, if who's to say I hadn't been asked, who's to say I said, who's to say that I didn't say, yeah, I'll be in the Royal Rumble, but I got to win. I got to be the shot at, at the world title at WrestleMania. That's the only way I'm going in the Royal Rumble. So who's to say that I haven't been asked? And who's to say that if I'm not asked in the future that I won't, I will finally go into business for myself and win that God blessed Royal Rumble and get that title shot at WrestleMania that I've always deserved. You think the fans would, would latch on to me and follow me if I went to the business for myself and, and just tried to just try to make a, a, a resurgence, a comeback, a, a second name for Eugene doing the stuff that nobody's supposed to do, some, something nobody's ever done. The world may never know. Hey, speaking of going in business for yourself, we, we just uh, recorded a video today where you talked about Maybe you did, or maybe you didn't go into business for yourself. It's going to be out either uh, this Thursday or next. So we got a new video coming out this Thursday and one next Thursday that we recorded today. Von Lylas, we got videos coming out every Thursday. My man Von Lylas is on it. He records these, he edits these, he packages them all together, he puts it out there. It's the hottest YouTube channel on YouTube today, soaring right up the charts if there are any charts like that anymore. But you're right, there was a story we talked about today where – where I might have gone into business for myself, where I thought about it, where it might have been, it might have been within my grasp to go into business for myself. And that video will be out very soon. And let's just say it involves The Miz. But as people know, The Miz put a bad taste in my mouth. And I know he's got to have a bad taste in his mouth with those big freaking teeth he's got. All right. Tell the people we'll see him over at Patreon. We're going to try this thing. Get a Patreon. We want to have some fun, everybody.